I am back with my second um, video and I will be talking about popular brands that I've purchased relatively recently and when I say relatively recently I mean anything from the end of 2008 or 2018 to um, 2020 so within the last two years it's pretty recent to me um, I try not to buy every single thing I want. I want to exercise some self-control and after collecting makeup for as long as I have been, um, it's best to, you know, just not try everything or get a whole new collection every year because I have a lot of tried and true favorites and limited edition collector's items. and. I want to use my things. I don't want them to just, you know, rot in the drawer, although admittedly many are, and that's fine. You know, they don't take up that much space. I think collecting is fine, and I'm not here to discourage anyone from doing it, but, um, you know, I just, I'm not in a place where I get, like, lots of makeup um, from each season in the year, so when I say Oh, my new makeup it's probably a product that's been around for at least two years um, I know some things like this what I um, already applied to my skin so that I don't look ghastly this is a very old product not to me this bottle I bought um, maybe last year and I already purchased another one because I went through it Yay. Um, but this is something that has been around um, for years and years. Um, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. There are newer um, formulations of other brands that are way more shade inclusive and probably address all sorts of skin types and concerns. Um, but you know, I want. I just. I hadn't used liquid foundation much, and wanted to go for something kind of old school that a lot of people have tried and trusted. This is a product that's not exactly new, but it was new to me. 2018, um, new to me, probably around before that. But I also used it. Now, between you and me, this product, I don't think I know how to use it properly. Um, or it just isn't giving me the same results that it gives other people. People say it really improves um, their skin and they do feel flawless and filtered. Um, I feel like it's a good primer, but I kind of get the same effect from Glam Glow, a uh, glow starter, a moisturizer that I use. Without anything else, I kind of look okay with that if I have a good skin day. Um, this one, if I use it instead of foundation, I'm just super like shimmery all over. I look like the guy from Star Trek. Um, but, uh, you know, other people love this and I want to use it up because I purchased it, paid up for it. It's a pretty expensive product to me for just being um, sort of a highlighter or, I don't, I don't know what this product is. Highlighter, primer, does something. Um, I want to use it up. This shade is Fair Pale Okay Color Match, I guess. Um, but it, it doesn't really do very much for me. But I used it. I'm trying to get my use out of it. And so that's what I have on under my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. And just for um, more transparency, I use concealer. And this is the one I have um, for now. I recently purchased it. Super Stay, full coverage, Ivoire 05. Uh, it's a really pale shade because I want that brightening. I probably could have used a very deeper shade. Um, this is like more of a neutral. I think like a warm would have been nice for like my um, redness over here. I get sometimes, but. Um, it's what I bought. It was only like $12, so it's a good one. I recommend it. Um, you know, I have some friends online who 
they already know their stuff and they said this formulation is similar to a Lancome one um, that's quite expensive but basically the same formula um, so yeah Maybelline is owned by um, L'Oreal Paris which owns Lancome and then this well I'll talk about this product when I use it but yeah this was around for two years um, when I purchased it, I remember it was 2018, um, I still have this much, and I use it, I wear makeup pretty regularly, not all the time, but if I go run an errand, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just not a very heavy powder user, or not this powder, um, but my thoughts on it will come later when I apply it. Alright, well stay tuned and I'll be applying things shortly. Alright. I'm back. I just want to apply, um, so Glossier, this is something, it's been around, but I hadn't purchased it until, um, this year, in about April. Um, prior to that, I used a sample from Benefit, and, um, that one, the sample was not really my color. It was made for like dark, bl dark blonde, light brown brows. This one is brown, and you can see it's dark. So, ooh. <laughs> and you can also really cake it on apparently. Um, but it brushes up, and um, oh, some people have warned me it, it would be gloppy and it's kind of pricey you can get and one by essence you can also get one by ColourPop with essence being the cheapest one about three dollars color pop I don't know I want to say it's probably you know six dollars between six and nine dollars um, and there's my cat and I've never applied this looking at a video inside of a mirror so forgive me if it looks like I've never used anything on my brows in my life I'm pretty new to it I used to never have to do anything to my brows but um, with age your brows kind of either thin or they lighten up um, and I'm just gonna look into my hand mirror to get a better grip on what's going on um, Yeah, um, you, you might find yourself needing a product even if you have naturally dark full brows that you rarely groomed. Um, I did used to get them waxed and threaded. Um, not as often as I should have, but just to clean up every couple months. Um, but now I can't get them done anywhere because of the stay at home order everything going on. What I like about this palette is that it includes a lot of jewel tones as well as a very like basic color. Now personally a lot of people they like the pop of color that's what they'll buy a palette for. I like the pop of a safe color that I've always wanted like or I've always been collecting like lituation is the reason why I bought this palette the next reason is sponsored. This is a blue br brown similar to MAC Club, MAC blue brown pigment, and I'm sure there's so many other blue brown, that beetle sort of color. Um, there's so many uh, brands that make that color. Wet n Wild had one too in their comfort zone palette. I keep buying palettes with this color. I keep out buying palettes with this color, taupes. Um, pops of color that you might not I've seen before that would be like the red pinker it's a gorgeous color um but um this palette has a good mix of those like nice safe colors but lots of jewel tones and these jewel tones they will enhance almost every complexion um from the liliest white to very deep skin tones so you're not buying like a palette that's going to disappear on any skin tone and I understand the frustration with other uh, palettes um, from this year and last year where they're like pastels which don't 
show up on medium and deeper skin tones and uh, the sultry palette like I think it's a beautiful smoky taupe silvery um, with the pop of <laughs> coral but that pop of coral isn't even very bright and it's not going to really uh, show up on a medium to deeper skin tone and so it's nice when someone puts out a very inclusive palette and she was awesome enough to include like jewel tones that do look great on like people who already have so much um, available to them so thank you Jackie and Una um, who put out a beautiful palette with Anastasia Beverly Hills so I'm going to um, go for Lituation the basic color that Ray got me I'm using um, the brush included so every Anastasia Beverly Hills palette has um, a beautiful brush set included double-ended ones like I guess a crease brush and the other one is um, an eyeshadow packing brush that probably has the titles of those types of brushes and all so this is lituation and on me it's like a very deep smoky taupe which is exactly what I thought it would be I think this color is a great everyday color and a good alternative to a smoky eye combined with um, like heavy eyeliner, maybe a deeper crease. You can also lighten it up with um, you know, a lighter color. You can blend other colors into it. It's very versatile. Alright, um, so that's situation. Let's see. Trust Issues, beautiful highlighter color. I'm going to put that one, this is a Sephora brand brush. And I've had this brush set forever. Um, can't even remember when I purchased it, honestly. Way more than 10 years. 2007 maybe yeah since 2007 and it's held up I've never had this part unglue and I wash my brushes like I don't know um, a wild person um, uncivilized person warm water when it should be like cool to avoid having these melt but if you have a good quality brush this part shouldn't melt the glue shouldn't like you know melt down to liquid and then your thing comes off um, this part has never broke um, yeah everything's intact yeah even this one and these ones this is the blush brush or powder brush are notorious for um, you know having this style of brush because there's more glue there's more of a base, you're gonna have the glue melt if you use warm water and uh, soaps all the time. Um, and I use soaps, I use um, facial cleanser or shampoo. I don't use special facial or special brush cleanser. Um, but you know, these have held up. This hasn't peeled off. These, the color, the paint usually peels off. Um, they may have said Sephora at one point, that part did come off, but you know, after so many years, since 2007, um, you know, sometimes things wear down a little, but, you know, minor things like that. So that is, um, with the highlighter. Um, and then I also wanted to go, um, like, line my eyes, so I'm gonna use a liner brush. In fact, use an actual smoky liner brush so there's this really cool brown brownish purplish reddish color called credit and I think that would be a great liner color and I might you know use my mirror because this is just not natural to me yet it's fun but it's not natural so I'm gonna do my makeup in the my little hand mirror. So 
this is probably the quietest makeup tutorial ever. And that is my hair, not a wrinkle. I might want to do some under eye work too. If you could get this palette, um, I would pay full price for it, but it might be on sale on some sites because um, it did come out earlier in the year, or at least I noticed it earlier in the year. Um, I might want to pick it up because it's beautiful. Um, in another video, I'll talk about the um, other Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes I have. Because I went a little bit wild on buying palettes. For a long time, I wasn't buying any new eyeshadow. Um, because I didn't need to. I had every color under the sun. And I haven't, I wasn't sucked into palettes yet. Um, but then I wanted to refresh my makeup collection after having a baby. I was like, oh, I need to, you know, find a, myself again. And I ended up getting into palettes. It seems like convenient if you're on the go. We were traveling a lot to see um, grandparents and. I liked having, you know, a different palette with me every time we traveled. Um, it was fun to see how many looks I could come up with from one. You know, a way to feel glamorous still. So that's credit as the liner. And um, to give it more of a pop-up color, I'm going to go in and use um about Shookington. Beautiful jewel amethyst color. Oh, and Anastasia Beverly Hills, they have this big beautiful mirror. I don't know why I keep using my hand mirror. I think it's just force of habit. Um, but they have a stunning large mirror for your eyes. And this is what I use if I'm ever in the car, husband driving, of course. Um, you know, I use this mirror to apply the eyeshadow or get ready. Um, not the, I don't need the mirror that you flip your phone. Alright, so here's what we have. Um, probably use some more blending. Gosh, this. Camera light is unforgiving. <laughs> you think it's going to be easy because everyone makes it look so easy, but really you're, you're at the mercy of um, lighting showing every flaw. to um, put on my mascara. Might as well. This is um, Maui. Maui Beauty. I always feel like her brand is so um, underrated. She was a really remarkable um, makeup artist. Or still is. But in the early 2000s I remember reading about her in Seventeen Magazine and reading her recommendations for products. Um, and mascara was something you know, she was really skilled with, making lashes look super thick, because she wiggles. Instead of going like that, she wiggles. And I think this particular 
This spirit is meant to be wiggled. So I'm gonna try to blend the techniques. But um yeah. Nellie um just remember her being so pretty herself. Someone who ought to be in front of the scenes, not just behind the scenes. So I'm glad she got a makeup line. Um, and she actually was like on QVC, I think. Um, another, well, on television selling sets. I forget what they call it. Today's special value, that's it. I never ordered makeup from QVC, but I watch it. It's very um, calming and soothing. Yeah, so if I wiggle, the mascara looks really good. Really stand out and curls. And her thoughts on mascara or long, thick lashes to make you look healthy and alive. And so that's always in my mind, like, I e can easily forget to put on mascara because sometimes I wake up so early for work, um, and I have dark lashes already, but I'll catch myself in the mirror when I'm fully awake later in the morning. Like, well, I forgot my mascara. I look like, um, you know, still sleeping. <laughs> my lashes are a little bit, they're not totally straight. They have some curl, but, um, you know, they, they look straight, straighter, um, and less healthy, less alive if I forget. Um, so, this has been 13 minutes. Is that Fenty Beauty? cream bronzer. The shade is 01 Amber, and I use this as a contour. Um, we love Fenty Beauty. It's been just a remarkable line um, by Rihanna, and um, you know, she's released some really awesome products, very inclusive shade range, really cool, edgy names, and very um, useful products, beautiful formulations, um, you know, I can't think of anything I don't like, um, that I've tried. So, um, this is the color, it looks gray in the pot, like straight up gray, but I use it as a contour, and I'm sure very, very pale people can use it as a blush. Um, I might be looking in my mirror, because I'm just more comfortable doing that. But you can see how I do my contour. Now, I just started putting it way back here. It looks more natural that way. I saw it um, recommended by some um, artist and then other YouTube people who follow these artists, you know. They wear their contour like that and I always think oh they look so pretty and sculpted maybe I should try it so before I would just do the cheeks um, you know so you can try anything I'm just using this random brush I've had since I was a teenager I think it's by Lancome I think it was for like blush <laughs> but it's really small and it's just perfect for either concealer or for um, contour. Um, I know that looks really dark, but I'm going to blend it really well, I promise. Um, and then I'm going to do a little on the nose. You can't really see what I'm doing in my nose, but just a little. I don't want... <laughs> it's so embarrassing if someone ever noticed that you're trying to contour your, your big nose. Um, Maybe it wouldn't be that embarrassing because it's so common now. But, um, yeah. And so, and then I've got to blend it. So to blend it, 
I'm going to take this brush, take this powder, this is Too Faced Peach Perfect. <laughs> okay, doesn't like to come out. So Peach Perfect seems like it'd be great. You try it in the store and um, you know, it looks beautiful under the harsh Sephora lighting. I got this in 2018 or around my birthday um, from Downtown Disney. I always remember everywhere I purchased something, what I was doing, who I was with. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is it's peachy. So if you cannot wear peach or like anything with a tint of peachy color, um, you know, it's not universal. I think translucent is more universal. And, um, it smells like peach and it tastes like a peachy candy like um, those Smarties to some people they might think that sounds great um, I don't really need my powder to taste like anything oh, it's better. the blush um, I'm going to use is also by Fenty Beauty and it's smaller than the bronzer. I mean, this is the comparison. So, um, well, I'm getting, probably getting better value for the bronzer. I don't know. I never really calculated um, gram per, per penny. So, I'm really itty bitty. But they're very pigmented. I like them a lot better than Stila convertible colors. And I love those. Um, you know, but, um, they're, yeah, they're so pigmented, and the finish is not tacky. So, the Stila Convertible Colors, super fun to use. Um, they're not always versatile as advertised. Like, you can't always use the cheek color as your lip color, because no one would wear, um, you know, the, I had the really, the brown one, Can Camellia. Doesn't really look good on my lips. Um. This color is Rose Latte, and it looks brown in the pan, brown, reddish brown. On my cheeks, it looks like a plummy, um, rosy color. It's um, like a natural, healthy flush. It's so cool. I love colors that can do that. They look, you know, unusable, unwearable for my skin care my skin type but um or skin tone but they're um you know actually very wearable in the um on the cheek on the skin so here is the highlighter i'm going to use becca uh, moonstone lunar new year special edition um year of the rat i'm year of the rat so i got a bunch of lunar new year um stuff all highlighters actually um, except for one blush um, as I said this is by Becca and it's part of the regular collection it's just moonstone and they just printed a wrap you know um, what is it called embossed yeah so nice cute anyway I'm gonna apply this with Elf Sculpting um, Face Brush. I found this at Dollar Tree. Um, normally there's six dollars, <laughs> so much more, at um, Target, but Dollar Tree is where I found this, and I'm so glad I did because see how what? Any time I've used my Becca highlighters, I've been underwhelmed because. I guess the brushes I'm using are not dense enough and they don't pick up the, the shimmer. But this brush is so dense, it picks up the shimmer and I don't even need to like, um, um, wet it with mist or anything. It's just, 
yeah, that was one strip. I think I'm going to go and do the other one because I like blending. I like um, kind of annoying and trying to do like that. But yeah, oh, it's so, so much better than what I've been using. Um, I don't have to wet it, and you shouldn't have to, at this price point, you shouldn't have to wet it, um, Becca, a bron bron Becca highlighters, they're, you know, pricey, you shouldn't have to, uh, wet or put a hole in the pan to get it to show up, um, you know, everyone else says that they love how they show up, um, but I, I want them to be a, a little bit extra, um, Alright, so here's my look um, with all those products. It didn't come out too, um, you know, wild, and um, I got my blending together. So the last step is going to be this lipstick that I discovered in 2019, and um, I'm glad I did. And since um, my discovery of it, it has been uh, renamed, the brand has been renamed. The color is Lolita, but the brand is now called Kindness Vegan Discovery Beauty. It used to be Kat Von D's line, but um, she sold it. So now if you buy it, you know, you she's not getting the profits. Um, I love this color. I got a sample of it um, in my, what is it, the Se Sephora birthday gift. It was like a sample of uh, KV KVD lipsticks and um, an eyeliner, I think. And I fell in love with this. Um, I like the book. I'm not like romanticizing it. It's creepy in the way it should be. Um, I like the the mystery aspect of it. And then the writing, um, descriptors of nature. I know Nabokov was like, um, he studied and collected butterflies, for example, and, you know, pinned them. Um, I study and pin birds. Um, I like his description of, of things like confusing the um, hummingbird for um, a certain moth. Well, that was fun. hawk moth. Um, parts like that. Um, I'm not thinking it's like a love story or anything like that. Um, but yeah, my point is I read and I like. Um, the book, and I like the color. It's a beautiful pinky brown mauve. Um, I think it looks good with a, like a neutral look, and it looks good with purples, so that's when I bust it out. Um, I also like a song called Lolita, so like having all this, it's like, oh, you know, why not have, I, sometimes I like purchasing things for the name. And um, this happened to have a, a name that's meaningful to me because of the other art I consume. And the color is, um, I like it for me. Um, and then I'm gonna top it off with Fenty Beauty Universal Gloss Balm in Fenty Glow. I also have Fussy, but I think Glow will warm up the look because my highlighter is warm and, um, you know, Fussy's a little cooler. And I'll probably use that in another look. I love these lip glosses. They're among my favorite. They, um, they smell like strawberry. Um, so good. And, um, they last a pretty long time. Um, and they just go on top, they sit on top of your lip so they don't migrate, um, you don't end up with like that goo on your lips, and, um, you could even like, 
do one of these where you take it to the edge of your lip for that, like a, you know, overlining with lip gloss. And it won't cause it to bleed. It is just a fantastic formulation. Um, so yeah, that's my look. Um, I have black hair naturally and I'm wearing black so yeah, I kind of have like that natural goth thing to me um, but I think this um, this was a really fun look to do with all of my uh, newer favorite makeup items um, and um, thank you for watching and I hope to review other fun stuff I've uh, purchased this year and um, I'll talk about uh, what I like about them, if they work for me, um, and if they're wor worth all the hype. A lot of these things uh, were kind of hyped up when they came out and um, I just like providing an honest consumer review. Um, you know, if I'm not all of these things I've purchased. Um, unless it was like a gift with purchase, which none of the products I used today were. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, and you have a great week.